Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to discuss another problem. But before going forward, if you have not liked the video, please like it, subscribe to my channel so that you get notified whenever I post a new video. So without any further ado, let's 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 get started. So the problem is can place flowers. It's very easy problem. You you have a long flower bed in which some of the plots are planted and some are not. However, flowers cannot be planted in adjacent plots. Given an integer array flower bed containing zeros and ones, where zero means empty and one means not empty, and an integer n, return if n new flowers can be planted in the flower bed without violating the non-adjacent flower rule. What does the problem means? Let's see this test case. So this is an array given to us, and it has zero or one. So zero means that this plot is empty. This plot is empty. This is empty. This is empty. And one means that here there is a flower. So we need to we need to plant n flowers. So but the there is one condition that the flowers cannot be placed adjacent. Like if here it is one, we cannot place a flower here because then there will be adjacent flowers that we cannot do. So if we have to plant one flower, so we can place it over here, in place of this, in this plot which is empty. So then there will be no adjacent two flowers. So this is two. So let's see. The, like what we are doing is we need to place this flower in an empty plot. We have to pla place this in an empty plot. Empty plot means wherever there is zero. So where we can place it. So either we can place here, we can place here, or we can place here. Now we cannot place here because previously it has one, <coughs> right? And two flowers cannot be adjacent. So if we place one here, then two flowers will be adjacent. So that is not a uh, possible. So we cannot place flower here also because then if flower is uh, here, then they will be again adjacent, which is not possible, which, which should not be done. So uh, ideally, we can place this one flower over here. So uh, this flower will not be adjacent to any other flower. So in this case, we can place these n flowers here. So this is true. Now, if <clears throat> let's say we have this another test case one zero 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 same test case, but this time n is given to us is two. That means we have to plant two flowers. So either we can plant here or here or here. So we two flowers we have to plant. So that is not possible right we can only place one flower then only it will not break the rule but if we have to uh, place two flowers then one flower either we have to place here or we have to place here so in either case it will break the rule of the no adjacent no adjacent rule right so that's why output for this will be false we cannot place two flowers in this flower bed in this flower bed we cannot place two flowers so I hope you understood what the problem is. Now let's see how we'll approach it. <coughs> so if this is the test case given 1001 and total flowers is say 1. <coughs> so see, um, we if first point which we can notice is that we can only place flowers, we can place flowers in empty bed wherever it is empty plot empty plot so empty plot is at zero so what all we have to consider we have to consider these places where zero is there right this is one thing second thing is that for example we can place here if we are if we are thinking to place a flower here then here and here it should be zero it should be zero right that there should be empty plots then only we can place flower here otherwise if here it is one then we cannot place flower here because then they'll be adjacent or if flower is here then we cannot place flower here <coughs> here because then they will be adjacent even if here it is zero even if here it is empty we cannot place we can do like this that if here it is one here it is zero and here we can place but that too depends upon the whatever previously it has. So if you can understand from these examples, if we have to place here at this particular position in the middle, in the middle of uh, these two, 
if we have to place here then it depends upon whatever it is present here and whatever it is present here so just pause the video and think that what should be the condition so that we can place a flower here two conditions should, should be there see first if let's say this is i your i position first thing should be that this flower bed of i this value over here should be zero means it should be an empty plot this is first condition second condition should be that whatever is previous here whatever the previous element that is flower bed i minus 1 this should be 0 and the next that is this index that is ne uh, flower bed i plus 1 right this should also be 0 if this is 0 and this is 0 then only we can place a flower here right i hope you understood what i'm trying to say so this is the approach which we'll be using here <clears throat> so these two are the conditions now uh, let's see how we will do it so we have 1 0 0 0 1 and n is 1 let's say we will start from here and we at every step we will take two variables previous and next which will tell us whatever the previous element is and whatever next is right so over here it is 1 so obviously we cannot place a flower here so we will go forward go forward here now here it is 0 so that so we can place a flower we can place a flower right now let's say we have uh, we have 2 here uh, or let's say one, uh, 1 only so see <coughs> we have 0 here now we will check what is previous to it previous is 1 and next is 0 so can we place a flower here no because in order to place a flower both previous and next should be zero then only we can place a flower here in the middle so we cannot place here so we'll go forward also we will place we will have a total variable which will tell us how many flowers we have pl uh, planted yet so now we will check for this we will find what is the previous of this previous is zero and next is also zero so now both previous and next is zero hence we can we can plant a uh, we can uh, uh, plant a flower here so we will increase our total by one and we will make this as one so this since we have planted a flower here this will become one don't forget to change it zero to one right otherwise it will affect the further iteration now what we will <coughs> So now this will become one. Now we'll go further. So we will iterate further and this will be zero. So this is zero. So we will see the previous. Previous is one and next is also one. Hence we cannot place a flower here. We go forward and one is here. So we do not take it. Obviously we cannot place a flower here. So if you see at last our total how many flowers we have planted is equal to the number of flowers we have to plant. So these are equal, hence we will return true. If otherwise over here n was 2, then obviously we cannot plant it. We can only plant in this case, we can only plant one flower. So n is not equal to total. So we will return false. So in this case, we cannot pl plant all the two flowers here in this flower bed. I hope you understood the approach and the dry run. Let's see the code. Java code will be in the description. So, see, it's very easy. We have taken a total variable. This will tell us how many flowers we can plant. And we are running a loop until the flower bed size is not, uh, uh, that is, we did not reach the end of the flower bed or our total is less than n. Means we uh, still have to plant flowers. So, if the flower bed value is zero, then only we can plant so we will find out the next if, if we are at the last index then we will take next as zero otherwise we'll take the next index 
then we'll find the previous if we are at the starting index that is like let's say over here then the previous will be taken as zero otherwise we'll take flower bed i minus one as previous so if both are zero then only we can plant the flower at that index and we will uh, do total plus plus right we will uh, since we have planted a flower so we will increase total variable by one and at last if total is equal to n then only we will return true this will check if both of them are equal to each other then only this will return true 